I'm Tara. I'm one of the directors in the admissions office. I'm so excited for y'all to join us today. All the students are going to introduce themselves first before we get started on questions. Go ahead. Yeah. Right. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, so my name Oh, you're good. Hey, I, hey guys, I'm Sarah. I'm a freshman. I'm a health science, exercise science double major. Welcome. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Bayende Bonyongo. I am a double major in French and computer technology and information systems, as well as a minor in history. I am a tour guide. I'm a DJ at WQFS 90.9 or Sin Radio. I'm also a tutor for French. I work at the information desk at ITNS. I'm the treasurer of the USBA as well as the president and vice president of different organizations on campus. If you didn't get all that, you can ask them individually as well. Matthias. Um, hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Matthias Pogukankum. I am a junior slash rising senior because I'll be a senior next year. I am uh, a double major in psychology and African American studies with a minor in sociology. Um, and I'm an RA slash ACD on campus, and I'm also a tour guide, so I can ask questions about housing and things like that. Thank you, Ms. Dia. Hey, everyone. My name is Dia Kaufman. I'm an upcoming sophomore, and I'm majoring in international studies with a focus on East Asian studies. And on campus, I am going to be an RA next year, as well as a peer mentor and a principal problem-solving scholar. Whoop. Congratulations. <laughs> Larry. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Larry McMillan. I am currently a freshman, but I'm classified as a junior. Uh, I play baseball. I'm a tour guide, uh, heavily involved in campus, but I just can't recall everything at the moment. But I'm happy that you all are here today. Thank you, Larry. All right, Larry. Arlen, you're on mute, darling. <laughs> you're on mute. <laughs> okay. Can you can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. Okay, you can hear me now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So my name is Arlen McCarl Gonzalez, and I'm a first year. I'm a tour guide, and I'll be majoring on criminal justice, and I'll be minoring on forensic science as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anybody have any questions for us? If not, I'll go ahead and get started with some questions. If you guys want to share the obvious one, oh, why'd you choose Guilford? Whoever would like to answer can go. I'm not going to call you out. <laughs> um, uh, so it's, oh, it's a while ago now. Um, it is. Um, because uh, <laughs> Well, partially because of uh, location, uh, Guilford was, um, I live in Charlotte, North Carolina now. Um, it's about an hour and a half out, so it was close to home, but I also felt like it could be independent. Um, but a big thing for me about Guilford was how small it was. Um, I'm a person that thrives in small environments, and I just love the personal relationship that everybody seems to have. Um, and so far, I've been right about that personal relationship. I have a large group of friends. And, you know, I found them quickly and everybody just gets along great from the professional relationship I have with my professors as well, too. Um, yeah, that's basically the reason why, just the closest of the campus and pretty much just was in general, too. Great. Some of the first years want to answer? Uh, well, I, um, I don't mind answering. I chose okay. Guilford. Uh, the size wasn't really a factor. So to me, I was kind of chasing my passion of being able to be great in the classroom and also in I athletics. Can't. And so you can't hear me. I said, yeah, and can so you speak up a little I bit? Committed to Guilford, uh, speak up. I committed to Guilford College because um, well, I was offered on all levels, but Guilford was the only one that would let me really pursue the aggressive academic career that I wanted as well as enjoy the sport rather than that being my primary job in school coming secondary. Awesome. I could go next. Okay. Yeah, I'll answer. Um, so when I came to Gilchrist for the first time, my interactions with the student and faculty were just so kind and genuine. And I was really looking for 
a community on campus. And I really felt that from the first moment I set foot at Guilford. And so I think that that was a big factor in my choice. Great, thank you guys. Arlie, did you want to answer that one? <laughs> yeah, um, okay, go I choose Guilford. I choose Guilford because like how like small and diverse it was. And like, I felt so welcome when I first went, when I went to the spring to Guilford. It was like a great experience for me and I met a lot of new people. And like, and like the criminal justice program was really good as well. Thank you. There is a question on the board that wants someone to talk about the difference between the two first year rest halls. You wanna take that one? Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so. Okay difference between the two first years there's not a real difference between the first two year res halls um the, well sorry the two first year res halls um they're both uh dorm style setup so they both have you'll have a roommate in both of them um i believe benford has a few more rooms but other than that there is no real difference in the rooms themselves or laundry uh, or laundry <laughs> so there's laundry in both both are in the basement um you do have both have the same shower system, things like that. So there's no real technical difference um, other than the way that things are laid out a little bit differently. Uh, Benford is in a T-shape. Uh, Milner is a straight building. Um, but other than that, it's the, basically the same thing. You'll get the same amenities. You'll still have access to uh, free laundry. Um, you'll still have a sort of game room slash living room. You'll still have a kitchen as well. Um, and you'll still have all of those sort of amenities. So not a real big difference, just in the way that things are laid out. One has a big orangery. <laughs> yes. Benford does have the orangery, but that's not, I kind of leave that out because it's not just, just I not, love it. just use it. Um, even though you guys don't have the orangery, Milner students can still access the mm -hmm. orangery. So use it. Um, you just got to walk towards it. So. I didn't mean to cut you guys off. Is there anybody else that wanted to share why you chose Guilford? If not, we can move on. No? I was kind of a piggyback off of everyone <laughs> what they said. Um, a small school was kind of what I was heading towards. I was stuck like touring Lenore Ryan in Guilford. And the minute I stepped foot on Guilford, the student faculty like relationships are so strong. And to know that your professor knows your first and last name is a good feeling for myself to strive in the academic part. So, I mean, it's just a big piggyback off of them, but. Yeah, thank you. Um, the next question, what are some of the major items we should bring when we move in? You want to take this one, Dia? Yeah, go ahead, Dia. I have my ideas. I don't know. It's really about what you use, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know yeah. if there are specific items that I would recommend. I mean, you want to bring your clothes, you want to bring items from home that you love, you know, things that remind you of home. Um, I think bringing a microwave is very Definitely. Very helpful to have that in your room and also a printer. Um, but it, it's really hard for me to make a clear yeah. list of things for you because it's just so personal based on what you use on a regular basis. Good answer. We do have um, packages that you can get, um, you know, through Res Life. Do anybody else want to add to that, Emmanuel, Larry? Um, I know for one thing for me, it was very big. Um, uh, even though it's not required because Guilford do, does provide computer labs and things like that, um, I think a laptop is definitely something that you would want to bring to uh, campus. It's extremely beneficial to have so you can do home from basically anywhere. And um, just personal for me, because I can't survive without them, bring a pair of headphones, bring multiple if you can, because it's definitely necessary. So you can, you know, when you're walking around campus and things like that, you'll have be able to listen to music and everything like that, because it definitely helps me out. And I lost my headphones for a week and I did not know what to do with myself. So personal experience, grab a pair of headphones. I felt that on multiple levels. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like overall, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. No, I was going to ask you I'm someone just wanted to say something. Go ahead. Overall, I think a key um, for what knowing what to bring is bring a taste of home, but leave just enough to create your own personality. 
So as time goes on, you're gonna get new things and be presented with a ton of Guilford gear because it just happens. Uh, if you are involved in campus, then that's gonna double how much Guilford paraphernalia you get. And it's gonna constantly build up and you're gonna be like, well, I don't have space to bring all of these clothes because of it. So just be smart. Um, I would say pack light, but bring the necessities because it's gonna grow. Especially if you're in love with shoes as much as I am. And definitely also just storage containers, awesome. spaces. Um, so, you know, uh, package bins, uh, vacuum things. I don't really know exactly what you guys use, suitcases, things like that, but um, just definitely a trunk, definitely additional forms of storage, something that you can stack up on top of each other underneath your bed or in your closet or something like that, um, just so it doesn't feel like it, you can compact everything so you don't feel as clustered as you most likely are. So, you can also wait till you get to campus and get all that at Walmart or Target around the corner. <laughs> definitely. definitely. Um, so, other things that are on this list, let me go ahead and start reading some questions. Um, someone asked, do you recommend getting the bed and or snack food packages? I'm thinking uh, just, they might be talking about like the bedding and things like that from Res Life. I mean, personally, I don't that. get any of those, so I can't really recommend it. It's all like basic items you can bring for yourself. Um, however, if you do come from far away, I would suggest you get them in advance so like they're already here and you don't have to bring them like with extra mm -hmm. suitcases and stuff. Uh, but like if you live nice. close by, even like if you don't have it with you, you can always like go to Walmart across the street or like Target and stuff like that and just get it there. So mm -hmm. first I would, what? it's like, I would recommend if you live far away, but like if you don't, not really. Let's see. Good One item. Thank you. One item that I definitely would recommend is investing in a, a, a mattress topper. Um, yeah. And then once you, yeah, cause it, it just like, it changes the whole <laughs> everything. Um, and then if you like curtains, if you're sensitive to light, that mean, like take into things, look at how you live at home and what you like ver versus what you dislike, and then try to incorporate some of the necessities once you get uh, as an RA and as an ACD, I do have to say this. As much as you guys love them, I know everybody loves them. You can't bring string lights on campus, so please don't bring string <laughs> lights. Because we're caught, we're gonna say, don't do all that. Don't bring string lights, but there are alternatives that you can use. Like I know a lot of people get like lava lamps. I personally got myself a light bulb that I can connect to with my phone, and it changes the colors in my room. So even though I don't have string lights, I can definitely change the temperature, the 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 my lights change the color, things I like to fit the vibe of my room, whatever I'm feeling. So that definitely helps out. Um, but you know, Zanari, I had to put that out there. Don't get straight. Thank lights. you. All right, I have a good question on the list. For the first years, what are the most interesting classes you've taken? Personally, the class I'm taking right now is ADHD and African-American children. Woo! So I'm all the way through it. Not all the way through it, but I'm in it right now. And so far, I mean, it's, it's, I love it. Um, and another class that I've taken that was interesting was community problem solving. And it was focused on Greensboro, which is where Guilford is. So we got to like dig deeper into how the community works together with other communities, how they solve problems within their communities. And I personally gained a lot of knowledge with that because I am a commuter. And so I do live in the area. And so to see how my community does solve problems was was very interesting. That's great. Who wants to answer next? Yo, can I? Arle, Personally? You to get. Sorry. Arle, you're on mute. Oh, okay. Dia, you want to <laughs> or Larry? <laughs> sure. I don't know if you can answer. Uh, my first semester, which was I guess last semester, I took a class, uh, Asia Pacific History in Modern Times. And, oh. and it was countries which were uh, China, Japan, Vietnam, and Korea from the 1850s till current like now. Um, and I chose my major after taking this class. I fell in love with the subject and understanding Asia's relationship with Europe and America, which we're much more familiar with our histories, but it was so cool to have a different perspective on 
world history and relating it to American history. Yes. I could go next. Okay. Nice. Okay, so, <laughs> so one of the interesting class for me was probably the women's and gender and sexuality studies, which was, was talking about how like the different types of like being transgender, queer, and like you ha you'll be taking it with, with a professor named Tiffany. She's like really great. Like she, even she's a professor, but she could become literally one of your best friends. I'm one of your best friends. Thank you. Mom, it's yeah. really, I can't, don't get out of the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else want to add? Larry. <laughs> oh, for your three week, your three week class, um, your first three week class most likely is going to be initiate uh, or yeah, the yeah, initiate course. And, um, I took it with Rod. So that's a class where you, you're in your individual class for most of the day and then you leave that classroom and go to an auditorium where you combine with three other classes and you all collaborate on the same topic but from different perspectives. And I took that class with Rod. He's an English uh, specialty. Like his specialty is English, excuse me. And like the way we broke down the most simple of things and made them complex just to find what they really mean it was powerful and we took trips around the city like you'll definitely learn it'll definitely be a growing experience it'll sp expose you to guilford and the greensboro area it's a win overall i'm gonna go off of that my initiated class we actually i thought field trips were just in high school and we got to go tour a bunch of hotels within greensboro um and personally, I thought only field trips were in high school, but I thought it was so cool to like go with a class to go tour these hotels and see how they were built and stuff. And the relationships you build within your initiate class, because you're with those same people. That's where I gained coming in as a freshman. Most of my friends was through that class because you were with them for so long, for three weeks. And so that's where I gained most of my friends was to step foot in that class. And it was, it was great. Thank you. All right, another question. Can you guys talk about life at Guilford? Let's let's kick that one to the first years and then we'll let the upperclassmen answer that one. <laughs> Start with the manual. Life at Guilford is yes. pretty Yes, talk about what you, of course classes and then you know you can expand on life outside right. class. So uh, first coming into Guilford, everybody's so open and friendly. It's, it's crazy. Like it's almost scary sometimes. Mm -hmm. So you're uh, introduced with a, you're introduced to a ton of people. You have fun with them. And then the, when you first get there, there's also gonna be a lot of events that bring everyone together. And so it's, it's really like, I don't know, it's like a family reunion with people you never met. And they're, they're coming from everywhere constantly and it's new people every day. And it's kind of smooth. And then once you go from there, meeting people is so easy because the the main hot spots on campus that are just typically full of people. If you go there, then you have to interact. And um, it, it's just a great experience overall. And if you do happen to want to leave campus and go off and explore, we're surrounded by tons of other colleges who come and do the same thing with our school and just hang out. And it's really a great bonding experience overall. Anybody else want to talk about it? Nobody else wants to add to life at Guilford? Um, I, Frank, Larry, um, I met Larry. I'm not exactly sure where I met Larry, actually. I think I let, met Larry in the in the grill, I think, actually. So um, Guilford is something that's just a lot of fun. It's really fluid. Um, you hang out, you'll meet different people every day, and it'll be through just random conversations, like, you know, I was talking with my friend about Stranger Things one year. Um, I think with myself when you were talking about Stranger Things in the grill, and then I met two other people that loved it. And then the next thing you know, we were having a full blown discussion about what's doing and everything like that. So personally, for me, um, I thought that it's really easy to make friends because we're such a small school. We all kind of go through like the similar things. We take similar courses. It's not really hard to just meet a new group of people and. Um, you know, really thrive and grow with them. And I've, it's a lot of fun and things like that. 
some of the best moments that you have are just going to be, you know, chilling in the lounge, cooking food with your friends or walking places or things like that. It's just late nights talking about everything. And it's, just, it's, it's, it's really great. And I have a lot of fun. Do either one of you that live off campus want to add to what life is like for you on campus? I can add something to it. Okay. So I'm a commuter, so I live off campus. So technically for me, like the friends I have at school right now, like I was basically at school, like the days when I have classes and like I will come home late, like probably pretty late because like we will like do a lot of like fun, of, like I guess fun activities just to like get to know each other more and have like mm -hmm. a great time and expand our opportunities to spend more time. It was a great, it was great. Not a lot of fun time. So, um, thank I, you all. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, as a commuter, uh, the life is a little different because like she said, you're only really on campus during the times you have class. So one thing that I found that was very beneficial was actually getting a meal plan. So the mm -hmm. cafe is where I met a lot of my people, like my friends, um, like the library, surprisingly, like sitting at a table, <laughs> just like, hey, I mean, most of the people are pretty friendly. Um, and then uh, in front of Benford, there's like a orangey room. I think that's what they call it. It's like <laughs> yes. glass orangery. <laughs> yeah, there you go. it's got glass yeah. windows and that's kind of my go-to place other than the library to kind of study and do some homework. And there's always people in there. And so, I mean, definitely harder. It's a challenge as a commuter because you don't live in a dorm and you're not on campus all the time. But it was very beneficial to be in the CAF, really, to be around all those people and have that social experience. Thank you, guys. So the next question is, well, this is a good one. What's Greensboro like as a city? I'm from Seattle. I've never been to North Carolina. So I don't know what to expect from the city and schools in terms of people. We'll let the out-of-state folks talk about that one first. Do you? <laughs> Go ahead, I'll say people. Uh, well, I believe that coming to Toro Guilford was the first time that I had been in Greensboro. Um, I'm from Virginia, so I had not really explored cities in North Carolina and I wasn't really familiar with the area at all. Um, but when I came to Guilford in the fall, it was go out and explore the city. Um, and I found it a really charming place. It is not massive, but it's big enough so that you have all of the entertainment and all of the stores that you're expecting in a city. And I just, we found wonderful coffee shops, great little boutiques and stores to go explore. And I don't leave campus that much myself, but I, every time that I have gone off campus, I found something unique and interesting to do. I love Greensboro. All right, where are my Greensboro folks at? Do y'all want to say anything about your city? Um, yes, we want to represent our city. Yes, go ahead, <laughs> you talk about it. <laughs> go ahead, Larry. I got you. Greensboro is great. Okay, this is how it's it set up. <laughs> We're going to be on a small campus. It's just like a little island. So you, you get to know the people that are on that island. You meet new people all the time. The connection is powerful, right? Now, these yeah. are people you can go places with. So we're like, Guilford is right near a huge shopping center, friendly center. Best smoothies you can find, cookies you can find. There's a Chick-fil-A. Like, it just it <laughs> overflows with resources. Right across the street from that is Walmart. You never need but then if you keep going further down, you get downtown, beautiful parks, uh, open scenery, huge buildings, parking decks where you can go ride up with your friends and take pictures and laugh and hang out one night. Like Back the opportunities the are there. And in addition to that, indeed, and in addition to that, there's other schools close by as well. So not only do you find the people that are in your school and the people that are in the city, but the people that or getting an education at a different institution. So you can bond with them over that and it just keeps growing. Like the Guilford tree logo is literally Guilford branching out to everybody else. Okay. Um, yeah, definitely. I'd like to second everything that Larry said. 
He um he, he did it right on the head. <laughs> Um, yeah, Larry definitely hit it on the head. I, um, I have a lot of, uh, from Charlotte originally. So a lot of my friends actually go to other schools in Greensboro. I have friends at High Point, Greensboro College, um, ANT and UNTG. Uh, and basically that's how I spread out. Uh, and me, have friends on Guilford's campus, people at those schools as well. So Gil Greensboro in itself is like a complete college town. Like you can use your ID in places to get, you know, discounts. I use that at the movie theaters mm -hmm. all of going to see movies, um, different food places and things like that. And because there's a college town and, you know, college kids don't sleep, there's a lot of food places open. So you can always go out and things like that later at night. Um, but yeah, I've spent a lot of time in uh, downtown Greensboro. It's a great for it to, it is small, but for it to be so small, there's a whole lot of things to do. Um, one of my favorite things to do is, you know, put on a nice little fit, go downtown and take pictures with friends. Um, that's always fun. Um, like Larry said, go on top of a parking deck, take pictures, overlooking Greensboro as a whole, um, go to other schools. I go to a &T football games a lot on Saturdays, which is a lot of fun. Um, so there's definitely a lot more to do in Greensboro than a lot more than meets the eye, because from, if you just look at it, you would think, oh, it's a small town, not much to do, but there's- Small for you, since you're from Charlotte. I came from a town 25,000, this big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I came from Charlotte, so, you know- I love it. I we'll probably get it. It's about, so Charlotte is kind of bigger and a lot. Rally, bro. Easy, but, in um, case anybody was wondering, it's about 350,000 people, which is not small. <laughs> it is the third yeah. largest city in the States. Just saying. Tell them. Tell them. Oh, that's valid. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anybody else want to add to Green? <laughs> Does anybody else want to add anything about Greensboro? I love the diversity of the food. Does, you said that. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's all, it's all cool. You know, just okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. I, hear you. <laughs> I just want to say, because like I'm not from the U.S. in general. Like Going to Greensboro is kind of wild, because like, I see... People from like my home country like all the time. I'm like, yo, where have you been? Like, I don't see you where I'm from. <laughs> and I live about like an hour and a half away from Greensboro. So just like going there, you'll meet not only people like from different schools and like different like states and stuff, but like you will go there and like meet people from like different countries as a whole, like different continents, like from places you've never heard of. Like, and just like yeah, you can learn so much. Like, uh, there's lots of festivals happening 24 seven. I know there's like a food truck festival every year in the fall semester uh which is always great and there's like a folk music festival there's like international yes. uh, festivals and stuff 24 7. thank you all right i'm gonna keep it moving sorry y'all i'm getting a little behind Ooh, how is the wi-fi in the dorm rooms good signal who lives in the res halls oh all right <laughs> the the wi-fi has never failed me ever um i'm the type of person where i need to like talk on the phone before i go to bed i don't care who i talk to it just has to be somebody every night there's a facetime call like just to communicate and like, even if it's just connecting with my parents and there's never any glitching failing and if there is it's because it's the person on the other end like wi-fi when i had to turn in a paper and it was clutch timing <laughs> and you have to click that 1159 it's it's there for you. <laughs> what? That's funny. Anybody else want to talk about that one? All right. The next question is: Are the classes more lecture based or discussion based? <laughs> and how doomed would I? Since I'm really shy. <laughs> That's, I like that question. Sarah, you want to answer that one? Um, I think it's half and half. Um some professors split it up into like having like a lecture class and then another day it's going to be more discussion based so i can't really say one is that i've had because i'm only a freshman um has been one or the other it's been a mixture of both so i can't really say that i'm shy but i know of some of my friends that are shy and it really hasn't been a problem because you're in a class of like 15 people or like 20 people and like the discussions, each one picks off from another. And it's actually like a full discussion. It's not like answers question, one person answers it and it's dead. So I found myself to be, I don't know, comfortable in talking. Um, and to answer your question, I don't really think it's more lecture or discussion based is what I had. It's a mixture of both. Anybody who identifies themselves as shy want to answer that one? Oh, really? <laughs> not for me. <laughs> Do you want to answer that one? Yeah, I'll answer. Um, for me, like, 
I mean, I am. I'm, I can be a shy person, but like, that's. But, but I guess that's just how I am. But like when I did like my first, I guess like like half and half like di- um lecture or like discussion class like I didn't I didn't say anything like the first day but like the next few days I started to say something because like you start to get comfortable with like the people that you're surrounded with in the classroom because you're gonna be with them for like what like three months probably until like for the whole first semester and it just rotates but it's a great opportunity you feel welcome and you feel so special then Thank you. Um, the next question, when you say no string lights, does that include LEDs? Yes. Right, okay. <laughs> and then, oh, I'm sorry, someone, Candace, you asked if that class was part of a major. I'm not sure what class we were. Oh, maybe it was maybe Dia's class or who else talked about a class? I talked about. Sure. Okay. So do you guys want to just answer if it was part of your major, the courses that you described? Yeah. Um, Oh, she said ADHD. Okay. Um, so my community problem solving class, let me just answer it plain out. It's not any okay. part of my major. I'm an exercise science, health science major, and that those had nothing to do with my major. Um, so I don't know what major that would fall under, maybe psychology major for the ADHD and African American studies. Um, the I think community it may problem- also be community and justice studies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Justice studies, yeah. And then the community problem solving would be under not my major. <laughs> I just took okay. those classes for fun, just to see how it was. And you can do that. And that's all yeah. right. Okay, so cool. there's a question from Facebook. I've been hearing a lot of rumors about how this pandemic um, might affect the fall semester. Is this true? So, so far we know that we're gonna be online for the summer. We haven't made a decision on the fall courses yet. Um, so we're just trying to monitor that, you know, from our directions from our governor and kind of just move forward from there. But the administration is supposed to be meeting regularly with the task force team to make a decision on that probably next month. Um, and then we'll keep all the students in the loop about that. If that didn't answer, feel free to send another question. Okay. I've only toured campus once, so I don't remember. Is it hard to tell the difference between the buildings as a new student? Oh, that's a good question. Yes. Mm-hmm. Manuel, you want to answer that one? <laughs> yes, yes it is. Guilford is such a small school, so you wouldn't realize it, but I've been lost on there so many times as a first we year. Have especially. <laughs> we have signs. We have signs, yes, we do. <laughs> However, I believe in my intuition and my sense of direction. <laughs> Which was terrible. It was a mistake. Don't make the same mistake. <laughs> but nah, um, go for it. Like small at first, you will get lost. But after a while, like, you get used to it. And it's like, oh yeah, you can tell what building is which one from like the back, like five miles away. You're like, oh yeah, there's King and there's you. Like once we, you get we used did. to it, you'll be fine. Since me and Emmanuel's first year, they did update it. So now there are signs outside the building, so you know which building is which building. It's a lot easier. Shout out to the marketing team. <laughs> yeah, sure. so it's, right. it's, yeah, it's not as hard anymore. And then there's, you know, the academic quad and then the res hall. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. How is the study abroad program? They're great. Awesome. They're program. amazing. Like they help you all the way through. I was supposed to go study abroad this summer, but uh, because, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, totally. you know, I wasn't able to, but like they're like, all the way through the like, there they were, they were there to help me like manage the situation and see like how we could go like what i could do other than like so just doing that and they're not just focused on study abroad they're also there to like advise you like what classes you should take while you're abroad so you just mm-hmm. don't take classes that will n- in no way help you for your major and stuff and they're like yeah all right so let's see if you go study abroad this semester will you have enough time to complete your major that's like the main question they always ask it's like, yeah. how can we help you complete your major while going abroad? And uh, I believe that tech help a lot. in the uh, advising appointments that they usually ask what you want to study, or what you're interested in before they, um, you know, give you your options on where to study, just to make sure that they um, are connected. All right, this one is for my student right. athlete. 
how do you juggle sports and school? Sports in school. <laughs> um, <it's, laughs> I was not ready. Um, juggling sports in school, it, it's, it may sound hard. It's not hard at all because the sports teams, the, the, the people over the sports teams know that if your school isn't straight, then we might have a problem with the sports. And your, your coaches, all every coach I've met on Gifford's campus is Because if you can't survive the the sports and uh, and athletic and well, the athletics and the academics, then you need to perfect your uh, academics prior to ex- trying to mm-hmm. grow, grind for the um, athletics. And uh, coaches know that they're always on you, emailing you for baseball specifically. We get messages <laughs> about making sure we're on it. Uh, we get called out if we're not doing something right. Um, uh, there's there's a big one and I just lost it, but uh, the overall you don't have any worry. The social life is going to be there. You, uh, if you are an athlete on campus, you'll uh, combine with other athletes of other sports, and that'll be something that helps you not only socially but in your academics as well. The the connections that you gain from every piece of campus uh, that that's going to be the driving force to help you succeed in both. I know I, I played a. I uh, played on the football freshman year, my first year um, at Guilford. I stopped due to injury and personal reasons, but um, I do know, at least for the football team, I'm not sure about other sports, but they had to have a um, required study hall. And if you hit a certain GPA, um, I believe it's above a 2.75, I think. I, might, I forgot exactly what it was. You'd no longer have to take the study hall. But if it's below that, you have to be at study hall, and it counts almost the same as a, it counts the same as a practice. So they make sure that I know for at least football, uh, uh, study hall is mandatory. Make sure those are great. Thank you, guys. I think you should, everyone should know. Everyone should know that you uh, that the baseball team had a 3.0 GPA this past year, and so we didn't have yeah. to have study hall as a team. Hey, that's Outstanding. Good. Oh, that's okay. Good. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna keep us rolling. Let's see. Outside of sports, what are some of the events that are hosted? Emmanuel, this one's going to you. So we have lots of different events on campus <laughs> all the time. Uh, we have like a few music festivals. I believe we have one for the fall semester as well as a huge concert during the spring semester. Uh, different clubs will usually host a variety of events like our diversity clubs will host events showcasing the diversity on campus. We have our, uh, the outdoors club. We'll sometimes like go hiking or like go to whatever they do outdoors that I have no idea of. Rock climbing. <laughs> that too. It is whatever it is. It's not me. Uh, but like we'll have like lots of different events and students always, we're all like, we're always welcome to like set up events. Like if you want to do something specific, but you have not seen it yet, you're always welcome to like go to any club like this, to like GSBA, to CAB or anything like that. You're like, yo, I want to set up these events. How can we make this happen? And they will help you all the way through. Um, I know personally, I think I speak for most of the students on campus when I say we have this one event every spring semester that we all love and enjoy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Serendipity what is a week long festival. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> would you like to speak to their I would love to talk about serendipity go if I could. Serendipity. Okay, go ahead. Um, so serendipity is a week-long event in the spring. Unfortunately, it was canceled this year due to COVID-19. But um, sorry for the first years that weren't able to experience it, but you guys got it next year, trust me. But um, it's a one-week event during the spring, right around, it should have happened for the April, finals, right? beginning of April. Beginning of April, so it happens right around uh, the end of our 12 weeks, so right before the finals, just to give students a break and give them them some um, something fun to do. But it's a week full of lo- uh, week full of events. Um, we have um, okay, one second. We have um, what are we, we have a uh, comedy shows. We have the Wild and Out show, which is based off of the MTV series. We have comedians come out. We have um, magic. magic show. The step. <laughs> Uh, fine. 
Um, and it's just a week long of just great events and students have a lot of fun. There's food trucks. Um, uh, mass- uh, I think they have like the self-care station. So they have like the oxygen bar, massages, everything like that. And there's just a whole bunch of different events that students can join in. And it all, um, it all like uh, peaks at the co- concert at the end of the year, um, the Serendipity concert on Saturday, which is like where we have like a bunch of uh, famous artists come out and perform for students and everything like that. So it's really a lot of fun. It's amazing. You have to be there for that. I love the jazz concerts personally. <laughs> Don't ask me, but I like the jazz concerts and all the festivals that have to do with food. So much fun. Um, and the Black History Month is an entire month dedicated to Black history. And that's amazing. Women's History Month has some great events as well. Um, Soy and Leader, there's different, different resources and activities that we do for our community with Bonner and PPS and ECAR. It's just a lot of great activities on campus. Um, Okay, I'm gonna keep us moving. Any, anybody else want to talk about campus life for events? Speak now or forever hold your peace. All right. So the next one is: Is it easier to work on campus or off campus as a freshman? Mm-hmm. Who's, who's oh, a I can't answer that. Uh, okay. I can't answer that. So for me, I work on campus too, and I work outside campus. So like. It is like for me, like it was. I guess it's different for everybody, but like it was. It's kind. Of, it was kind of hard for me to like work off campus because I have like other stuff to like pay and also the schoolwork. But like once you figure out your schedule, once you figure, once you start out your classes, like you already have that set schedule for like the rest of the semester until you start your new semester. And it was pretty. Yeah, it was pretty stable. It wasn't too hard or anything. But like for me, since I was working on campus too, like the um, when I was on campus, that's when I was trying my best to like work on campus when I wasn't like like behind or anything or like I didn't have homework to do. And that's when I come to the admissions office and come help. That's for Target. Yay. So I say working <laughs> on campus as a commuter and a freshman was more convenient for my schedule because Like I said earlier, I was only on campus during my classes. And so I do work in the admissions department and like who I work for basically helped me work with my school schedule. So either before class or after class, that's when I would work. So I would come to, I would come to campus, knock out work or go to class and then knock out work again and then head home. And I know that I'm benefiting the college in doing my part. So it's a good feeling to work on campus. And plus you're with great people. And it's also how I met, it's also how I met a lot of friends too, was working in the admissions department. Um, So I definitely say working on campus is, it's a lot of fun. Shout out to all the incoming students. If you want a job, let us know. All right, let's keep it moving. What do summers look like as a student? And then how do you find internships and jobs? Anybody want to talk to that to that one? I know this will be your first summer for the first years as a student. So some of our classmen want to talk about that. Although I know this is a unique year, so. Uh, I mean, summer is pretty standard, I would say. If you want to like, mm-hmm. take classes, you're always welcome to. Like Guilford always has summer classes. If you need them, you can also take them at different schools and just transfer your credits there. So if you want to go to like, a school nearby your place and not stay on campus, you're very much welcome to do so. Mm-hmm. We do also offer plenty of uh, study abroad programs for over the summer that will allow you to go abroad and do that uh, studying. I feel that's and then we also have an edge program well. yeah we also have the edge <laughs> programs where you can meet students who are coming out to campus with you um as far as internships and job hunting goes you're always welcome to talk to your guilford guys those are uh staff members who are always there to like help us find jobs or internships or just pretty much if you need somebody to talk to they're there for that as well and uh they're always willing to like help you during the school year and even beyond that like like see how you're doing, help you like find a job or internship. And then it's always pretty, it's pretty easy to like just transfer the credits from internship to the campus as well. If you like it, you can always come back. Well, go back to that. Yeah, and we also have the EDGE program. I was saying that you can take classes on campus, um, which is really amazing. We'll pay for two classes and you 
you technically have to pay for your housing on campus, but a lot of students take advantage of staying around, doing research or getting ahead um, in the summer as well. The next question is, how important is it to have a car on campus? To my first years, we're gonna answer that one. Absolute necessity or not so much? I don't wanna answer that one. I can answer that. Sure, okay. I wanna answer that. Okay. Um, for me, I have a car, so it's like, I don't live on campus, but like, mm -hmm. it's hopeful. Cause like, for me, I have to like go back and forth and have like stuff to do. And it's actually a great opportunity. I can't really say much cause I don't live on campus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I live on campus or I lived on campus and a car was not a necessity. <laughs> it's really not it's so I can cool. say that <laughs> Our, everything is pretty close and if you really need a ride well not having a car is going to help you be resourceful and it's going to really help you learn the city that you're in and the, the new environment mm -hmm. because you can't always just go and do something without having any problems like sometimes you have to face the, the small problems and they're going to help you like get, create a learning experience for you I did have my truck on campus, but I did not start using it until really baseball season hit. Um, and that mm -hmm. was just because after games, I was starving. Um, and honestly, before, like when, the, when we first got to campus, they had the Lime scooters out. So it would be like 10 or 15 of us on Lime scooters yes. riding through the streets to go to McDonald's or Chick-fil-A. Like what you, what you need is there and it doesn't cost much to use if it does have a price at all. So like you're, you're really set up for greatness. And if push comes to shove and you truly need a ride, then you have friends to call on. Uh, one of my friends, I had some friends that had illnesses and it was like, hey, I'm sick, I need a ride. All right, bet, I got you. I'm busy right now, but so-and-so got you. Like there's a connection everywhere and it, it never fails. Thank you. So the next question is, how do you determine which courses to take? I think we covered that one already. Um, thank you for guides. Um, Facebook question for the three week, three hour courses. Do you take breaks during the class periods? Yep. All right. And then does anybody know anything about the ultimate Frisbee team? Yo, I lived across the hall from about half of the team. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> they're a lovely See, bunch. Like they're great people. I love them to be honest, to be completely honest. Oh, I know they go to like tournaments every, just about like every two weeks or so. Well, it looks mm -hmm. like they go to one every two weeks or so. And they're always like a happy bunch of people, like always happy, always chill, always like welcoming to other, uh, new people and other people. And somehow they always try to take me on their team, even though I <laughs> suck at throwing a frisbee and I've shown it to them. So it's like, it's just like always like welcome. They're always like, oh yeah, we're going to teach you. It's, it's all good. We can teach you. But like they're pretty chill. Thank They're you. pretty good. Um, does anyone know about the cheer team? I know they are very enthusiastic and ready to be active. I know that for a fact. Um, does anybody else want to speak to that? They're relatively new. So, um, I don't think that they're competing or anything like that in competitions, but they're pretty great with school spirit and you know being motivated and cheering on our teams. Um, do y'all have talks as far as diversity activities to talk to people with different backgrounds? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, I know that um, we do have talks like so you always get emails and things like that about different programs going on. But um, I know for some of my classes, I had to attend events and discussions about sort of things. So we have attended LGBTQ plus community um, um, talks, uh, talks for students um talks from students who uh, immigrant students um black student union talks about what it means to be black things like that so um it's hard to like, come up with like specific examples off the dome because it's been yeah. a minute yeah but, I um, can uh, add to that. yeah there's some there's always events and you'll get emails about those so they'll be in the guilford budge which is the email that you'll get um mm -hmm. or that you'll get every morning and it'll have different events that are put in there you'll still hear about them through word of mouth or you'll get them in what's the G, which is another email that's sent out about student events and things like that. So um, yeah, there's definitely a bunch of talks and discussion based activities and things like that. Um, I know in February we had our uh, black, we had a black history month in February. So we have a bunch of kickoff events for things like that. And then we also had our um, house of straight privilege. So it talked about um, 
violence against um, transgender people and um, around the around the nation. So we also have some information about that. So there's definitely a lot of events concerning people of different backgrounds and um, different experiences. So. Yeah, I would say that the um, the other two places to find great events um, are definitely the Intercultural Engagement Center, um, and then definitely in Founders Hall. There's a huge poster board that folks post flyers about different great events um, going on on campus. But the what's the G in the buzz is your guaranteed way to find information. All right, the next uh, one is okay. I am an active member in International Club, and so we have a lot of discussions encouraging, sorry, <laughs> encouraging uh, diversity and about different cultures and about cultural awareness and peace and conflict and all of those big issues. So that's also a place to find great discussions like that. I would highly encourage looking into it. It's a wonderful space full of all these great people. And um, yeah. Thank you. All right, so the last few questions are, what are the res halls like? Does anybody else want to answer that? <clears throat> I don't typically hang there. <laughs> for, for first yeah, year they were students, updated. they're nice. Yeah. Yeah. For first year students, uh, you yeah. live in luxury, <laughs> like, in all honesty. You have everything you need. You're equipped with the kitchen and it's kind of state of the yard. And then it has a viewing area for if you want to eat or someone wants to watch you cook. And it's just, it's perfect. And then, um, Every floor has their own little room where you can chill and relax and there's a TV in there. It's a big flat screen and it's equipped with, you know, Disney Plus, Netflix, Hulu. Yeah, and keep rubbing it in, keep rubbing it in, Larry. Yeah. You have right. access. Keep rubbing yeah, it, in. it really, it sounds like it would suck to be an upperclassman right now, but you know, you're not like this. <laughs> Listen, Man, we just have um, access. One right more year, one more year. They're really nice. Um, <laughs> there are granite countertops as well. Fun fact, if you check your email, um, if you go to the virtual tour on the website or in your email, there's a very cool guide that's talking about the res halls. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> All right, the next question is, I'm looking to work on campus. How do you apply? So basically, uh, ask Tara. Go, go ahead, Larry. <laughs> ask Tara. Yeah, ask Tara. So you just go to Guilford Works on our website um, and you can just look at all just highlight students positions and it'll show all the positions that are available for you as a student. it will always be a tour guide. <clears throat> yes, <clears throat> fun job. Uh, to work with some of the folks fun on job. the screen right now. And <laughs> you have an interview and just make sure you do bring all your information, you know, your ID and things like that. So when you do get a position, you can get the paperwork started pretty fast and you can start working. Um, the last question, do you recommend joining different clubs for the first years? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I joined Definitely. all the clubs my first year. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> so it's funny. You get to meet new people. You get to like go to different events and That's have like exposure to different stuff. Yeah, Sorry. it helps you find what you're interested in. I know some people who have joined clubs and then decided their majors based off of the clubs that they joined. So um mm -hmm. It's always a great, it's a great way of like self discovery, I guess you could say. So figuring out what you want to do. We do um, have an activities fair in the beginning of the school year where you get to see all the clubs and meet folks from all the different clubs and really just see what we have to offer and get on their email list. Sometimes they'll invite you to just learn more about their program with pizza or some other snacks. It's always a good opportunity. Um, but most of the time, I feel like a lot of folks meet people in their res halls or in the cab different clubs or see something fun in the G. Uh, the next question, does anybody else want to answer that? Well, I can piggyback off of it. Guilford is good with feeding students for coming to events. Keep that in I mind. I do my best. I do have a question, <laughs> um, sir. I saw I, I, my computer died, so I had to get my charger, but I saw a question about working off campus. and when yep, yep, we answered that. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, did you want to talk about that? Yeah, I mean, I just, I work off campus as well. I'm a life mm -hmm. YMCA, like 10 minutes down the road. And um, I will say that Guilford, both my job and Guilford are both like very, very, um, they recognize the fact that you're a student and that you need to work and that, you know, while you do need an education, you also need like food. So um, they definitely help out and professors are really helpful with um, 
you know, establishing to help me work around my work schedule and things like that, and also my bosses. So if there's any advice I could give you to, if you decide to work off campus, just make sure to be upfront with you wherever you're employed with your schedule, whether it's including clubs and classes and just time for yourself, just make sure you're honest about that. So that way you can um, uh, really work around that. That's just a tip that I learned. And I just wanted to come back to that because I know I missed it a little bit. So someone, a quick question, someone asked about, do we have a color guard or winter guard team? We do not. Um, and then is there any other questions or anything else y'all wanted to say to the students? Before we start? You, enjoy, you will enjoy your first year. <laughs> oh, I was waiting on it. Go ahead, Larry. Um, I'm, I'm really glad you all decided to ask this question. It just means a lot to me. So personally, personally, I have the largest meal plan possible. Um, I found that as a, a student athlete, you you don't have you don't you eat for your student normal portion, but then you have to eat for the athlete portion because they're gonna work you sometimes, and you're always hungry. And so, let's dive into the calf. The calf is one of the best places on campus. It's, you see everybody in there just hanging out, chilling, talking, and then you continue forward. And that's when you expose yourself to the loveliness of the food. All right, so this is how it goes. First of all, <laughs> when you walk in to your right, we have a pizza bar. We, there's a pizza bar and the pizza specialists they are they are be good. they know how to craft it it's fantastic the flavors, you, it will change your life so then you keep going straight and we have like this whole bar and it's just like the meal for the day <sighs> oh my gosh it's amazing like you yeah. can you can oh go my. anywhere <laughs> in the calf right. it's like like the calf literally takes you around the world in your meal so like one day we'll have food from one section of the world and then another but we'll always have like the the generic go-to's like we we'll always have pizza and fries and things of that nature you can't go wrong if I mean, oh, did i tell you they accommodate you so look they like <laughs> you can't like whether you don't eat meat we have vegetarian options you don't eat anything you don't eat if you can't eat uh dairy products they got you now I, now the ice cream the ice cream is great be the bomb they got the lacone Me. section and then they the desserts tell them oh, really oh the, the the dessert section you can have like cupcakes brownies everything is homemade yeah, yeah. The brownies, the brownies do slap sometimes the brownies slap sometimes i'm trying to tell you now, now that was just the main cat all about the crumbs yo dude <laughs> that was just the main cat Bruh. you can go downstairs and sit a little deal for a restaurant we call that the grill the grill <laughs> is outstanding it yeah, has the chicken sauce. tenders they they updated the chicken tenders Oh yeah, you you might forget that you're Sorry. not in Chick Fil A and that you're actually on campus. The the barbecue sauce and then oh Miss Andrea she works down there in the grill. She like makes up the flavors. And oh has yeah, different. Yes. You can get them big. Did I, the milkshakes and smoothies? Oh my my milkshake smoothies. You can get any kind of flavor you like. The fruit smoothies are amazing. They're sweet, but they're perfect every time. That concludes my presentation. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Someone asked about New York style pizza and I had a uh, shout out to my New York pizza that's in Greensboro and walking distance from campus is so good. I typically always order that for every meeting. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to the person not, who asked about New York nice. style pizza. Not sure if they have it in the calf. Do they have it's that in the calf? It's not New York style in the calf. Okay. Okay. No. No, um, no, no, not, not and New York then, style, Someone asked about fraternities and sororities. No, we don't have Ooh, those. But we do have I an actually, amazing step team. I actually do know this. Um, I know because Gil Guilford doesn't have any sororities or fraternity fraternities, but I do know that if you do have a preference for them, I think because Guilford does work closely with UNCG and A&T, um, you can go to those schools and pledge at those schools while still attending Guilford. Um, they've reached out to me a few times about it, but um, it's never been something for me, but I do know that you can do that and that is an option. I'm not exactly sure about the process, but if you chose to do that, you could always do that if you really wanted to. Um, anybody know about the entrepreneurship club? There's, there was a question. About that. I didn't want to skip over that. Uh, yeah, we do have a new club. It's yeah. a market mind, and they're brand new, so we don't know yet what type of events that they have thrown yet. 
but like uh, I've talked to a president before and he's pretty chill. He has lots on his mind and he's really open to like new ideas and like helping with like different clubs as well. And I think I did see a quick question about are there, are sports a big part of campus culture? I'll bet about 40% of our students are student athletes. Um, if anybody else wants to speak to that, I know the games are a lot of fun. But anyone- big bonding. That's a big bonding zone right there. Um, that's a, lot, a place where you can meet a lot of people and really grow your connection. Um, going to sports games, it seems like whether you it, like the athletes support the other athletes, but then this non-athlete, they come and support the athletes as well. And that's when athletes and non-athletes come together and unify. And that's kind of makes that's that's a big part of help making uh, the campus feel like one as a whole. Definitely. All right. Last call for questions. I don't see any other ones. Tips for the upcoming first years. I'm gonna let the first years answer, then the upperclassmen, and then we signing off. Get sleep. Get sleep. <laughs> you think Valid. you think you can function without sleep? <laughs> it hits. Get sleep. I know it might be fun to stay up and hang out because it's like it's a new experience, it's a new freedom. No one's gonna tell you you go to bed. Get sleep. Because yeah. not having sleep but needing the energy is a lot worse than yes. staying up. I mean, than uh, just going to bed early and missing out on whatever might happen. That it could happen. There's no guarantee. Get sleep. Sleep is always there for you. Sleep a lot while you can. Yeah, sleep a lot when you can. <laughs> take naps. Naps hit on different levels. When you can take a nap, I suggest it. Take a nap. Like it doesn't matter where you are. Just take a nap. <laughs> 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 like you could be in the library. Just lay down. You'll be fine. Anybody else have advice for the first years? Yeah, I would say uh, be open-minded and ready to have new experiences because one of the most common ways that I saw a lot of first years um, do was just finding a place that they were comfortable and staying there, but going outside of your comfort zone and pushing yourself is a way to expand who you are and learn about so many new things. Yes. Also, mm-hmm. um, do not break the ping pong table <laughs> yeah, or the okay. football table. Yeah, that's it. Doesn't look like much, but it's a lot. It's a big part of campus, and we love those. Yeah, that's exciting. you know, it's the huge part of the community bounding parts. If you break them, people will not like you. All right. Another question <laughs> is okay. When is moving day? So as of now, it's it's typically mid August. I'm not sure the person who I think it's like August 27th this year. I think. Remember? So because of COVID, we're not sure um, if that's going to change. But typically, it's in the middle of August. Now, if you're a fall athlete, um, typically you have to come in a little bit earlier. Uh, but we will be in contact regarding that. And then someone else asked, "What is the earliest you wake up?" It depends on your schedule. Uh, <laughs> Good answer. Depends schedule. Yeah. To, it depends on your schedule. I work, so I work as a lifeguard, so I've had to be up at uh, 4 a.m. So, you know, it kind of depends. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, 4 a.m., open the pool by 4.45, <laughs> work till 1, class at tw- uh, class at 2. You know, you got it. It's a grind out here. But, you know, it depends That's on your schedule. All right. Um, um, one said thank you for taking time to do this and answering our questions grace said thank you so much i hope y'all stay safe and stay healthy of course stay help stay, practice social distancing guys please please ashley says thank you parts. so much thank anybody you. else want to share any other advice try and avoid morning classes don't take an 8 30 don't do that don't do that look, 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 look. <laughs> for my first year, it's better to get them knocked out <laughs> for a morning if you don't have morning to class. don't do it <laughs> yeah i if took an 8 30 class, class in the morning thank you <laughs> that 8 30 was killing you, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, it, it the best me. because they get you up and focused and ready for your day. You better tell them, Dia. <laughs> try, no, yeah, try that. <laughs> 7 30, my try senior that, year. Might. History. <laughs> One of them said, Stay safe. The more I hear about this school, the more I like it. Alexis, Aaron, thank you. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Yes, guys. Stay safe. Thank Stay you guys. Thank you very much. Stay informative. Bye, guys. Shout out. Much love. Go for love. Yes, stay safe out there. (laughs) Be safe. Don't go outside. If anybody has any questions, my name is Tara. I'm on the website. Feel free to send me an email, and I'll follow back up with you.
I'm so sorry that we ran out of time, but it was fun. So good to see my current students. Bye, you guys. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. See you guys. Bye. Yeah. Have a good one. Love y'all. <laughs> <laughs> <You're crying. laughs>